chicken or the egg? Which came first? Or in our instance, a lathe or a screw? Now why am I talking about lathes? It's because these are lathe alignment tools. When you build a lathe, the manufacturer relies on precision bearings, precision linear rails, and precision machines to machine the bed of the machine that they're then going to bolt the rails to and bolt the saddle and the assembly and the turret. After everything is bolted together, how do you verify that we're on center line, that we're not cutting a taper, that the spindle isn't pointing down or up, that the tailstock is aligned correctly? That's where precision lathe alignment tools come from. And that's the history of them. So I use these tools all the time. And we've been working on them for a few years now to try to come up with the best tools. So this way, they're the easiest, they're the most versatile, they're the lightest, they're the fastest for anyone with CNC service tech, or if you're just a shop and you wanna do the alignment yourself. So this isn't a video about how to do it, this is a video about the tools and how to sort of use them and what they're used for. This is a lathe test bar. This test bar is designed for an A26 spindle. That's gonna be your SL20s, some SL10s, SL30s, unless it's a big bore, ST10s, 20s, 30s, 40s are gonna be either A28 or big bore. So history, you have an A25 spindle nose, and that's a spec not built by any machine tool manufacturer, but chuck manufacturers and draw tube people and bearing people, everybody knows A26 spindle is about that big. An A25 spindle is smaller than this, and that is that big on the back, A26 is on the front. The next size up is A28. This on the back is an A28 spindle. Now the next size up, it's kind of weird. We go five, six, eight, 11. Doesn't that make sense? So if you have a big bore lathe, whoa, let me pick this up. Whoa. This is what the back of your spindle nose would look like. Now it would be clean. All of these are dirty because they have cosmoly on them. Just touching them will surface rust them. So a test bar, you bolt to the spindle and you dial in the run out at the base and then you dial in the run out at the end. Now when I mean run out, I don't wanna see any movement on my indicator. Right here when I spin this test bar. Then I'm gonna ignore whatever I read on the top and come out to the end and I'm gonna tighten or loosen these three bolts to dial the end in run out. So now I know that it's running true here and it's running true here. And when I mean true, I mean two tenths or less. I just dialed in one of these bars the other day and I got it, I think it was like 50 millions here and 70 millions there. I mean, almost you think the meter is pegged. Now it was doing a whoop D on here, but at the end and at the end it was running true. So if we put a test bar in a spindle and we spin it, it's now perfectly flat with the spindle. This edge is ground and this edge is perfectly perpendicular. So if we bolt it to the spindle, this is a true representation of if the spindle is up or down or crooked. Now we're not checking for lateral movement and we're not checking for looseness. This is rigid. And so I'm just checking when I spin it to see is it running out and then I can measure on the top to see if it's pointing down or pointing up and I can measure on the side to see if it's pointing towards the operator or away from the operator. Now because it's round, if I'm pointed like this and my indicator goes perfectly straight, it's going to roll off the edge. The same thing would happen if it was pointed down and I measure across the top, it would roll across the edge. Now we're talking like a thou, two thou. I just did an alignment on an SL30 and I had to line up the spindle and you start with, I usually start with the wedge tool but I'm just gonna talk about this for a second. I lined up the test bar at the beginning and at the end and then the, the dial indicator on the side was like doing this and doing this and it turned out to be the Z rails were crooked and they had smacked into stuff and, and bent the rails, just like two thou, three thou, but that's enough, I could see it. This is ground from here to here within 50 millions. It's perfect, we test them. So a test bar is great for that, for moving the headstock up or down or left or right. Now, why would you need a wedge tool? This is a wedge tool and it, it looks gross because it's got cosmoline all over it, for A25 and A26. If this is our spindle head, I'm gonna bolt it to it and I'm gonna run the turret down in X. Now the turret, it should be 
perpendicular to the spindle. It should go perfectly up and down. But what if it's doing this? Or what if it's doing this? So let's say this is the turret and we kaboom, e-stop, oh no, bang, 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 bang. Well, now it's gonna be like this because they ran into a hard jaw. So now when the X goes down, it's going away. So after I line up the spindle, I can use this to square up the turret. Now it can be done by just measuring on the face. This is exactly what the spindle nose face would look like. You can measure, you can come in an X, touch, back off, go over and touch, and that will give you the same reading. So you can do, you can do a ladle line without these tools. It's just harder and takes longer. Like you said, come in an X, go over, come in. Now, then you have to hit it and you go touch and you go touch, and then you loosen up the wedge and you hit it and you touch and you touch, and you keep going until it's zero, zero. That's only zero and zero there. If you have a wedge tool, you can see, so you put X at home and you come down, this is six inches, so you're gonna get 12 inches of travel. Not 12 physical, but 12 on the machine, six here. And you'll come down and you can see, oh, the turret was doing this. But then when it got further down, it now it's doing this. And then you can reset your indicator and finish the rest six or 12 inches of travel. And you can really see, are my X rails doing this? Or in, in most cases, they hit it in the center and the rail has like a, a wowie in it. So then I'll try to fix that wowie. This is ground, same thing. 50 millions or better. They're hardened, they're ground on this side, they're ground on that side. These are a big time saver. So we have this for A25, A26. We have this for A28. And we have this big boy for A211 for big, big, big lathes. Now, what if your machine has an A25 spindle? I have an adapter because we used to have to run around with an A25, an A26, and an A28. And the test bars were solid and they were heavy. So we just thought about it for a long time and went, ah, oh, let's make an adapter. So now you can use the A26 test bar on an A25 spindle nose. The same thing if you wanna use an A26 spindle on an A28 spindle nose. Now you could also bolt the wedge tool to these and I recommend when you put them on, before you put on a test bar and before you put on an adapter plate to run an indicator on the spindle nose and spin it and then bolt the adapter plate to it and run the indicator on here and make sure things aren't, something's behind it. I always will scotch bright the spindle nose, put some WD-40 on it, clean everything. A hair, a chip, uh, uh, some nastiness is gonna make this thing sit a little crooked. So some of the, the fun, I don't know if they're fun, I think they're fun, I like late alignments. The easy things about this test bar that I like are that I can put an inner rapid indicator in the end right here with a set screw. Then I can sweep a boring bar holder. I also made this for a few customers who said, hey, we like to use the centering into call style ones where they fit in the center and they reach out um, and they're easy because you can hold them. I think they're called a coaxial indicator. Those aren't as accurate. If I'm doing an alignment, and the customer really wants it perfect, I'm, I want that boring bar holder within three tenths, four tenths. So I'm gonna use a test indicator, but a coaxial indicator will work, and this will get you close enough in the center, but I wouldn't perfectly trust this to be center line, quote unquote, I mean, it's fixed, but um, for getting it close, I would, I would check on a single point. And then it's hollow. Now, why is it hollow? Two things, one, much lighter, I think this bar weighs like 28 pounds, 27 pounds, some of them are close to 40. You put this tailstock test bar in the tailstock and you bring it inside. And then you can sweep the end of it with an indicator all the way around and line up the tailstock to the main spindle. Now that's really crucial because you don't want the tailstock low or high or off center. So it'll fit inside and you can check it at the base and at the tip you can, you can do it without, I've seen people take the test bar off, chuck up an indicator, or indicator tool like this and sweep the test bar and then you wanna check the sides of the test bar. The only other thing I was gonna mention is that this adapter has a cutout for the draw tube. This A26 has a cutout for the draw tube. The same thing here. So it can be a pain to pull a draw tube if you're having to do an alignment and you don't want to. So you just clamp the turret, make sure the draw tube is in, this will fit over it. If you're using the A211, big boy spindle, big boy draw tube, you've gotta use a spacer or pull the draw tube. So this is the ground spacer that then you bolt the ground plate adapter to. Other, one last thing, 
If you're doing an alignment on an ST machine and it doesn't have these, we carry them. You don't want to have to go spend an hour machining stuff. You want to just get to alignments for aligning the turret up. Those are really simple. All of these tools, good news, are available for rental. We rent all of these tools and we can also sell these tools and we can ship them overnight if you're in need of something. Everything is in stock. So I'm the CNC repairman. I do machine tool work. I help with phone support, we help with parts, we help with everything. We've got a whole video about an overview of a lathe alignment, a full rebuild. It was all the ball screws, the linear guides. Go check that out. And I think you'll learn something. It's like 35 minutes long of me rambling. And keep watching our videos. We're gonna be making more about how to dial one of these in, how to check the wedge, how to use the push-pull blocks, how to use the adapter plates. Everything you need CNC, two to 300% cheaper than OEM. Check out CNC replacement parts and leave a comment. Do you think I'm crazy? Probably, leave a comment. Do you think it's a good idea? Leave a comment. Have you tried to align your machine without test bars? Nice work, that's hard. Leave a comment. Doesn't hurt, one more thing. Tell your friends, you know somebody who oopsied their lathe, send them to me. We've got the tools to help you fix it. Thanks for watching, I'm the CNC Repair Man. <laughs>